I know I said I wasn't going to create another video on whether or not it was good to drizzle well-sampled information, but in response to a statement and a question, I am going to make just one more. It's going to be a short one. I'm not going to go all through the processing steps this time. We're just going to dive right in. So what I'm going to do is reply here to a question and a statement. I'll start with a statement. So in response to my video on resampling versus drizzling, a person made a statement on a forum that went like this. There is no point in drizzling information from a telescope of a thousand millimeters or greater of focal length if the information was already well sampled. Hopefully I reframe that statement satisfactorily. And to respond to that statement, I'm going to note again the equipment I used to shoot this image. This image was shot with a Celestron C8 telescope, a 203mm aperture telescope with a native focal length of over 2,000mm. The telescope had a 0.63 reducer corrector on it, giving it a focal length of 1,240mm. And this image was shot in the dead of winter. It was one of the first images that I ever shot with the new Player One Ares M camera that had just come in the mail. And the conditions that night were it was about minus 22 to minus 25 C, a moonless night. So the transparency of the sky was great and the seeing was very good. The stars were barely twinkling at all. It was a great night. It was also shot in an area of border one to two conditions. We'll call it border 1.5 or so. So if you look up this telescope, reducer corrector and camera combination and those seeing conditions on the CCD calculator at astrotools.com, you will see that the calculator calculates this combination to be perfectly sampled for the conditions. So the prediction in conventional astrophotography thinking is that if an image is perfectly sampled, it not only does you no good to drizzle, it can actually degrade the image. Yet, in test after test that I've run, the difference between the undrizzled image on the top left and the drizzled image on the lower right is substantial. Even a perfectly sampled image benefits from drizzling. Now, of course, that presupposes good processing. If the image wasn't processed correctly, I don't think that anything can save it. You have to go back to the original data and work it again. But if the image was processed well, the image is going to benefit from drizzling. Now, none of these images are finished developing. There's a good dozen more steps I would do to these images if I were actually developing. With these images, I did minimal development so that I could compare in so much as possible apples to apples. But as developing continues, the more improvement a drizzled image will see, especially compared to a non-drizzled image. To see what I mean, check out the description for the link to the finished Astrobin image. All right, let's move on to the question that was brought up. It was, wouldn't drizzling times one give better results than drizzling times two? To the person who asked that question, I appreciate it. That is a good question. It, it really is. And I felt it was worth exploring completely. So what I did was I went back to the original information, the original lights, flats, and bias, and then restacked them using PixInsight's WBPP script, the same software that I used to develop the other images. And I restacked the information, this time using a 1x drizzle. And you can see the outcome of that new stacking operation on the left half of the screen. And experimentation illustrates that drizzling times one is not superior. In fact, there is degradation of the image. The stars come out better when you only drizzle one X. They are cleaner and less likely to show artifacts from drizzling. Now better stars is the advantage of drizzling one X. Now let's get into the disadvantage. Drizzling times one did not do any favors for the non-stellar information. In fact, oftentimes it degraded that information. Let me just zoom in and illustrate real quick here. Look at the gaseous structure on the left side of the Drizzle 1X image here. You can see it's, it's not bad, but it's also soft, unrefined, diffuse, and lacking defining detail. Now look at the Drizzle times 2 image here at the gases on the left side of the nebula. It's the same gases, but there is a lot more detail within. And we would see that all over the nebula if we were to go through this image and, and inspect it. So for the very best image possible, drizzle your stars at 1x, then go back and redrizzle the image at 2x. Then you can overlay the 1x stars over the 2x non-stellar information. And that way you get a complete image that gives you the best drizzling has to offer. I suspect that the degradation of non-stellar information at drizzling 1x is what created the myth that drizzling should not be done on adequately sampled information. However, that's only my suspicion. I can't say that for a fact. What I can say, for a fact, is that yet more experimentation does not bear out the postulate that it's not good to drizzle well-sampled information. Tests after tests after test, in fact, shows quite the opposite. 
For the best stars, drizzle 1x, and for the best non-stellar structures, drizzle 2x. So if you were trying to image something like a globular cluster, drizzle 1x. If you are imaging non-stellar structures like nebulae, go with drizzling 2x. And you can get the best of both worlds by drizzling stars at 1x, then extracting those stars with something like Star Exterminator and overlaying the star plate on 2x drizzled non-stellar structures. Well, I hope that helps. I made this whole video in 45 minutes and that's about 10 times faster than it usually takes me to make a video. I hope I did it well and I hope you enjoyed it and found this information useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And feel free to pop over to the Astro Bin link to look at all the original images. That way you can compare and contrast them for, them for yourself at almost full resolution. It won't be quite full because the internet itself has some limits in portraying images. And bear in mind, there are also differences between monitors. I'm using a 4K photo editing monitor, a monitor specifically for photo editing. It has been color calibrated and such. And if you're using a 1080p monitor or a gaming monitor or an uncalibrated monitor, you're going to see some differences. But otherwise, popping over to Astro Bin is the best way I know of to let you, the viewer, see the final images so you can make your own decisions on what you like most here. You can find the link to those images in the description below. All right, thanks for watching, and feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. Now get out there and shoot that sky.